Okay, here's our problem again from chapter 8 on the confidence interval for a difference in mean and reminding you that we're given the summary data for the samples. We are not given the sigma for the populations, either first population or second population. So that tells us we have to use the T distribution, as does the fact that we've got less than 30 for our sample size. So we're going to use pH stat in Excel to solve this rather than crunch all the numbers and build these equations and crunch the numbers. So the first thing we're going to do is go to add-ins, pH stat, and you might be tempted to use the confidence interval uh, table there or the dialog box. But if you look, we've got mean, mean, population variance, population variance, population total, total difference. That's not the mean difference. That's not going to help us. So let's go to two sample tests. We've got summarized data. And then we have a choice here of three different T tests, an F test, Z test, and so forth. We want to use the T tests for equal variances. Remember, it told us that the variances were equal. In pH stat parlance, that's pool variance. And in many stat books, it's called pool variance. So let's just click on pool variance. And we'll bring up this dialog box. Let me move it out of the way here so we can see our data. The hypothesis size difference is always zero for mean difference. Our level of significance alpha is 1 minus their confidence level, so that would be 0 0.10. Our first sample size is 9, and our second sample size is 9. Our first sample size is 448. Our second sample, I'm sorry, sample mean is 401. And our first sample standard deviation is 5.8. And our second sample deviation is 8.1. We um, always use a two-tailed test for a confidence interval. And that puts alpha divided by 2 on each end. On the equal variance option, or they call it the pool variance t-test, you can click confidence interval. Make sure you put the right confidence interval in there. I sometimes forget that, but it's 90% confidence interval, which goes along with our alpha of 10. So we can click OK, and we get this screen come up. And uh, it has all our input data, which is in blue, and there's the confidence level. That's also input data. Once you generate one of these, uh, if you want to go around and just play what if, you can change uh, some of the, the data and it will output new information here. Down in the very bottom, um, we have our upper and lower limits for our confidence level. That rounds to 41 for the lower and 53 for the upper. And if we go back to our problem, those indeed are the answers that they asked for. So that's really uh, how quick you can solve it. Just as a reminder, uh, if you wanted to check these upper and lower levels, the output here gives us the difference in the actual sample means, 47, and it gives us a standard error. To find the margin of error that you add and subtract from the sample difference, you just multiply the uh, standard error times the upper and lower level. Let's just do that real quick. Lower level, lower limit, upper limit. And I'm going to use equal my difference in two means plus, I'm going to put it in parentheses, my standard error multiplied by my lower critical value. Close. I did it again. Get that standard error in there. I forgot to click it hard enough. And that gets my lower level, which is same value there. Upper level equal 
difference plus parentheses standard error times upper critical value of t and so that's uh, I keep messing up there I've got to add in there we go Excel's messing up tonight 52.79 same answers that we get there so just to show you that uh, you can do that and the reason I show you that if you're solving for the unequal variances in pH stat it does not give you directly a, a checkbox to get the confidence interval for some reason but it gives you again the standard error and the difference in the means and the critical values and you can solve for the upper and lower limits on the unequal variances the same way let me just show you that here is the same problem I worked using the unequal variances and as I said it didn't give us the upper and lower limits but I calculated the lower limits the same way the difference plus the standard error multiplied times the lower limit gives you those values so it's a very useful tool